Hey friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead and happy June. June is the month this year that we are going to be doing the Three Rivers Challenge Summer Edition. I am so excited. If you've been here for a while, you know that every January and February I do a pantry challenge and I document it on my social media accounts and it was requested that I do a summer edition to kind of see how meals are different during the growing season versus the winter. And so that's what we are gonna be starting in this video. I'm gonna show you how we're preparing. The first thing that we needed to do was do a full inventory of the pantry to get a good idea of all of the freeze dried and canned food that we still need to use up because we need to get these jars emptied before we start preserving the, the food that's coming out of the garden this year. And then I also had to do a full freezer inventory just to see what frozen fruits and vegetables I still had out there. I already have a good idea of the meat selections that we have, but I wanted to have an idea of all of the produce that I have available in the house, a good idea of the dried goods, get it kind of organized and inventoried so that I could meal plan for the year or for the month off of our inventory. So Miss Elizabeth helped me and we had a really nice little inventory sheet here. And just in creating this inventory, I got tons of ideas for meals that I wanted to make this month. And then obviously at the beginning of every week, I sit down and I make my meal plan in my planner. Meal planning is essential for me for success in a pantry challenge. I need to have a plan because I'm not, I can't just run to the store, have Adam run on the way home uh, from work when we're doing a pantry challenge, that isn't an option. I have to eat out of our stores and a lot of the food is going to be home cooked. And so we need to be organized. This was my meal plan for this week. Obviously the month started midway through on the week. So I'm going to show you the second half of the meals that we made for this week. Let's go ahead and get started with the three rivers challenge summer edition. So there isn't a ton of food that is growing fresh in the garden this time of year, but there is enough. And one of the things that is really growing are the herbs, especially the perennial herbs. This is some overwintered sage. And I decided that for our first breakfast, the night before, I was going to go out and harvest some fresh sage from the uh, garden and we are gonna go ahead and make some sage and maple sausage from it. So using up herbs fresh is one of my big goals of this challenge. I wanna be very intentional about using the herbs while I have them growing, instead of just waiting to preserve them um, and dry them for use later on in the year. So I chopped up that sage and added it to two pounds of salt and pepper ground pork. I also poured in some maple syrup here and I'm getting that all thoroughly mixed together. So it's just the sage, maple syrup, salt and pepper, and I let this sit in the fridge overnight. And then the next morning for breakfast, it was all of the flavors had had some time to kind of infuse in there. And I'm pattying up that uh, ground pork into some sausage patties that we are going to eat for breakfast. You'll see that something that differs in my summer breakfast is that they're very protein heavy versus in the winter, they're more carb heavy. And so we do a lot of breakfast meats and eggs because we have a lot of that available in the summer during the egg laying season. All right, but we do need to make a carb option with this meat and I'm gonna make some biscuits. I have my wheat berries. We're gonna grind this into some freshly ground wheat flour and I'm going to make my biscuits out of this. Freshly ground flour, you have to use a little more in your recipe to compensate for the fact that it's not as compacted as store-bought flour. So this is my biscuit recipe. We're gonna probably add an extra cup of flour to this because this is fluffier and fresh ground flour. Going to add the rest of the ingredients in my recipe. We're adding our baking powder. This is something I always make sure I have stocked in my pantry. I don't wanna run out of my baking powder. <laughs> adding some salt, mixing those dried ingredients together. Now it's time to add the wet ones. We're adding our egg, a little bit of almond milk, and then our fat, we are using lard. And then when you make biscuits to make them kind of flaky, you want to cut your fat into it. So that's what we're doing. We're going to get these biscuits all ready and rolled out while our sausage is cooking. Now we're going to get those biscuits cut into their shapes. I'm using this little nifty biscuit cutter and I just keep kind of rolling it out until I use up all of this dough. 
And then we're gonna bake these in the oven while the sausage is finishing up on the stove. And then with this, I also wanna have some fruit. We have a little bit of fresh fruit left in the house from our last grocery shopping trip. Obviously, this will be the end of the fresh fruit once we use this up this week, and then we'll have to eat the rest of the preserved stuff and anything that might be growing on the property. I know that there will be some berries that'll be growing here toward the middle of the month, so we'll have fresh fruit soon enough again. But for now, um, just making up a fruit salad out of what was available in the house, and you'll see more fresh fruit in our meals this week while we're using that up. Our sausage is just about done. We're gonna add that to the rest of the food. There is our fruit, our delicious sage and maple sausage, our biscuits, and some home canned grape jelly. And I had some happy little campers here eating this breakfast. Now on to the next meal in the Three Rivers Challenge. As I mentioned, there isn't a ton of food growing in the garden right now, but we do have an abundance of radishes and greens. So that we are using what we have and for lunch, I sent my garden helper, Elizabeth, out to pick us some radishes, and we have are having a great radish year. The bulbs are just huge compared to um, some previous years, so very happy about that. And then we've been picking off of this little patch of lettuce here for the last couple weeks, and it's been growing enough to give us a salad probably three times a week. We have another little lettuce patch that is growing head lettuce that we're just kind of harvesting the outer leaves but that will be the lettuce that we'll have um, once this little patch runs its course. So I don't plant too much lettuce this time of year because it got hot so fast that I knew that a lot of this is going to bolt. We've had 90 degree temperatures all week, so I'm kind of worried about my lettuce right now. Harvesting a few green onions here. We're gonna bring this inside and make a little salad for lunch. Need to get everything washed up soaking my greens here in cold water that keeps them crispy until we're ready to eat our salad and also helps get them all cleaned off all of my harvests that i bring in from the garden get tallied on a sheet and i have a sheet for every month what i do is i take the price at the grocery store where i would be buying produce and i put that in one column and then i tally my harvest in the amount that that item is sold in the grocery store so that at the end of the year I can sit down and I can calculate how much money my garden saved me. Um, if I had to buy that same amount that I harvested from the store, this is how much it would cost. And this is just a great way to keep me motivated to do the garden work every year because it's a lot of work in, in the spring. And if I remember that number that it, it saved me in the previous year's growing season, I am more likely to do the work and work really hard to grow this food for my family. Getting close to lunchtime, so I just am chopping up that salad and getting that all ready. And then we are gonna have some tuna salad with our um, fresh salad from the garden. So I have some mayonnaise in my bowl here and we are adding tuna from the pantry. What I like to do is do three parts tuna to one part sardines because we don't eat dairy. You guys know that we have an anaphylactic dairy allergy in our family and sardines are a great source of calcium. They're full of calcium. So I like to add that in meals wherever I can. But um, we also to our sardine and tuna salad here are going to add some sweet relish, some home canned sweet relish. Um, so sardines aren't a favorite of several of the children in my family. They don't particularly love the flavor of sardines. And so I find that if I just do three parts tuna to one part sardine, you can't taste the flavor of that. And then I have some children that just love sardines and will eat them straight out of the can. When we do use sardines, we make sure that they're the ones that are packed in water and not in oil because we don't want the extra oil in our tuna salad. Just adding a little salt and pepper. So all it is is mayonnaise, relish, tuna, sardines, salt, and pepper. And then we're gonna serve that over top of our salad here. I have some store-bought crackers that the kids can use if they want to dip um, them into their tuna salad. And then just a couple quarts of home canned pears and peaches, leftover radishes that we picked that didn't go into the salad. And all the kids will come and kind of make their own little plates up. A nice little healthy 
uh, meal here, nice little quick lunch that uses up some homegrown produce, gets them pumped full of some calcium with those sardines, and everybody was very happy um, to have this meal. Moving on to our next one. This is a dinner. We're grinding a little more wheat here so that we can make pizzas. Wednesday nights are always pizza night here in our house and we make pizzas in different ways. This is my standard pizza crust recipe that I always make here and we are tripling it for the children on this night. So I take this recipe, multiply all the ingredients by three and that should be enough. We've got our water and our yeast here. I'm adding a little bit of homegrown honey to get this activated and once it's fully activated we can start adding our ingredients so we have once again our freshly ground flour we're going to add that to the yeast mixture we're adding some olive oil we're also going to add some oregano if i have onion powder or garlic powder in the house i'll sometimes add some of that i don't have any right now um, adding some salt. Remember, this looks like a lot of salt, but this is a triple recipe. There is quite a bit of flour in there, so <laughs> it's not a lot of salt for three uh, batches of the pizza dough. We've got it in our mixer here. That'll mix it together and knead it for us while we move on to the next step of making our pizzas, which is making our sauce. In my last Azure Standard Hall, you guys saw that we were out of homemade tomato paste, so I bought a bunch. And then when I was doing my pantry inventory, I realized, silly me, I have all of these pints of home canned tomato sauce that I could very easily cook down into paste. And so I'm kind of kicking myself for not having a better running inventory. Um, but that's okay. We will use the tomato paste this week. And then in the coming weeks when I make pizza, I think I'll cook down some of that sauce so that I can clear those jars out um, so that I can fill them with other things this year. So here are the ingredients that go into my homemade pizza sauce, and I'm gonna show you how we make that up here. So I start with my tomato paste, and I use two cans for three pizzas here. Um, we have some homegrown honey, we have a little bit of olive oil, some oregano, some salt, and then as I mentioned, sometimes I'll add some onion powder or garlic powder if I want to. And then our dough is done by the time I got done making my sauce. We're going to go ahead and spread this out um, among three pizza pans. And you guys, some of you are probably going to say, why don't you take the time to make those look a little more perfect? And that's because I am trying to whip this dinner up quickly. I have eight children to take care of, one of whom is a um, nursing baby. So we just do what we need to do to fill bellies here. My kids do not care how straight their pizza crust lines are. They just want to eat something delicious. So that's what I'm doing. This is pesto that came from last summer's garden. It's fresh, that was basil that was fresh from the garden, some soaked cashews, lemon juice, and salt that I made and preserved last year. I found this while I was doing my freezer inventory and I was like, oh, I'd totally forgotten that I preserved that and decided that I would thaw it and make a pesto pizza. So we used our sauce for two of those and one of these is gonna be a pesto pizza. I have a child that absolutely loves pesto pizza. So he was very happy with that surprise. What I tend to do is when I get to this stage, I lay out all of my um, toppings and let the kids make it. I browned up two pounds of salt and pepper pork sausage. We've got a bunch of toppings here, olives, radishes. We have anchovies, just some various pickled vegetables. So I'll get this all ready. And then I let the children come in and make their own pizzas how they like them. And typically my second son, David, is the child who kind of volunteers to make it for the older children that like a lot of toppings. Some of my younger, younger children just prefer to eat the crust and sauce with just meat on top. And so we'll usually do one pizza plain that way for them. Since we can't have cheese, I'm gonna grate some salt cured egg yolks on top. I've shown you in previous videos how I do this. These are just egg yolks that were dried out in salt and then cured. And when you grate that over the top, it gives you that umami flavor. It's kind of a cheese-like flavor and it's a wonderful addition. It adds some extra protein, extra flavor to the top of our pizza. So I'm gonna go ahead and grate that over a couple of them. 
and the kids are going to absolutely love that. Some of <laughs> some of my kids, they're like, oh, it looks like cheese. And I said, that's the point. You know, it, it tastes like cheese. It looks like cheese. And it just adds something extra to our dairy-free pizzas here. Once we're all done getting these put together, we're going to get them in the oven and then the children can enjoy their pizza on Wednesday night. As I mentioned, every Wednesday night, this is what we make uh, because it's a very busy night of activities for our family. And this is what the kids like to have to fuel for those activities. Next meal, we have some freeze-dried zucchini powder. This is the last zucchini from last year that was sitting on the pantry shelf. And we're going to go ahead and rehydrate that and make some zucchini bread out of it. Um, because pretty soon here we're going to be pulling bushels of zucchini out of the garden and preserving it. So I need to use up last year's powder before we um, use this year's. This is the zucchini bread recipe that I'm doing. It's a grain-free option that I can have. So that's why I decided to make this. There is our rehydrated zucchini powder. It was about a cup and a half. We're adding a couple eggs. And the next ingredient is some nut butter. We're using sunflower seed butter, but you could use any kind. Some raw honey for our sweetener. Then we're going to add some cacao powder um, to make it chocolatey. We're also, we are using almond flour in place of the coconut flour in this recipe. A little bit of vanilla extract, some cinnamon and salt and a baking soda. We're going to get that all mixed together. And then I'm going to get out a pan and we're going to grease it really well with some lard, pour our batter into it, and then we're going to let this bake on 375 for about 30 minutes or so while we work on the next step of breakfast. So as I mentioned in the uh, winter months, I would bake something way bigger and that would be the bulk of the meal. But it is summer, almost summertime and we have eggs. So we're going to take some bacon grease here. I've got some hungry kids demanding some food. So we're going to hurry up. I'm taking bacon grease. I've got lots of eggs and we're going to fry these up and have scrambled eggs. Um, since we have so many eggs, we can have them with every breakfast. We have to ration them a little more in the winter and use them more sparingly. So I love egg laying season. It is such a blessing. So there is our zucchini bread out of the oven. I cut up a little more of the fresh fruit. We had a pineapple in the house to use up. Went ahead and got that cut up. There's our scrambled eggs. And then I portioned this into nine pieces. Obviously with this many children, that won't go very far. Everybody gets one piece. And that's why we had the scrambled eggs and the fruit to supplement with that. And that seemed to be enough to fill everyone's bellies and make it to the next meal. So happy kids. All right, now on to the next meal. We are going to set up a smoothie station. This is a great way to use up items from your pantry. We have over here some freeze-dried kale powder. We have some homegrown raw honey, frozen strawberries, frozen blueberries. We have some cacao powder some almond milk. We have a big thing of chia seeds back there. And this is just some random plant-based, dairy-free, soy-free toddler formula. I have no idea why I have this, but it was in the cupboard and I figured, you know what, this might be good to add to smoothies for some extra nutrition. I need to get this out of my cupboard. So we're going to go ahead and start using this up in our smoothies. The next ingredient we have is some sunflower seed butter, adds a little extra protein. We have some coconut cream for some fat and then some bananas. And like I said, the kids are going to make their own. It's like a smoothie bar. They can do individual servings in the little tiny bullet blender and everybody can make them to their own liking. I typically make them for the little boys and just do like a little half cup portion here. And then older children will make their own and put in whatever they want. And everybody is happy. I know someone will ask, is that enough to fill up your children for a lunch? And it definitely is. The older children each had two smoothies. And if we end up having a snack after nap time um, in between you know, lunch and dinner, this will keep them full and happy. And there's a lot of nutrition. Sometimes it takes less food to fill you up when it's very nutrient dense versus eating huge portions of food that is just empty calories. So these were a nice little nutrient punch. The kids loved it. Great little lunch, used up some stuff. 
Speaking of nutrient dense, for dinner we're going to go ahead and have salmon. I have a code in the description box of this video. If you want to get 15% off your first order of Wild for Salmon, go ahead and check that out. This is our favorite salmon. I'm using their smoky citrus salt to flavor it, literally just cutting up the salmon, putting it in a pan, and sprinkling this salt over the top of it. Great flavor. That's all it needs. While our salmon is baking, I'm going to make some rice. And why make rice with just water when you can pour in some home canned chicken broth to add a little extra nutrition? While our salmon and our rice is cooking, I went ahead and headed out to the garden to gather some fresh greens. The first thing I'm gathering is some spinach, and I had terrible germination. My spinach seed was like three years old, so it had very poor germination. But we have enough to harvest little bits here and there to add to other greens. So here's our little meager <laughs> spinach uh, harvest. We're gonna also add some chard to it to kind of bulk it up. This is rainbow Swiss chard. It's one of my favorite things to grow in the garden because it's just so prolific and grows so easily here where I live. So we're getting that. We're gonna add some kale as well. Just kind of picking random greens from around the garden to saute up. We're gonna bring that inside, wash it all very thoroughly, and get it chopped up. My favorite way to eat my greens is to saute them, and I typically like to use uh, bacon grease for that. You guys know I love some bacon grease. It adds great flavor, and just salted that as it sauteed. There's our rice, and here's our salmon. Our salmon baked in the oven on 350 for about 20 minutes, and this was just one of my favorite summer meals to have is fish and greens like this. It's just so filling and yummy. All right. Speaking of favorite summer foods. Oh, I love making breakfast outside on the camp stove and decided to break it in this week. So this is our little camp stove. I will link it in the description. I love it because it keeps the mess and the smell and the heat outside, which is a blessing you know, to me as a mother. So we've got, with our bacon grease on the griddle, we went ahead and gathered some eggs directly from the coop. It doesn't get much fresher than that. Go ahead and crack them directly onto that greasy griddle. And we are gonna sit out here and cook our eggs in our PJs <laughs> um, and get breakfast ready for these hungry children. I love the camp stove griddle like this because I can do large batches of eggs and bacon in no time at all. Sleepy children coming out to join me, waiting on their food. I love this about summer. So then I brought everything inside and plated it up. They get a little bit of bacon and eggs and then the rest of the bananas that we have left over. <laughs> my three little musketeers there. Several of my children like ketchup on their eggs. I know some of you are going, ew. <laughs> but just giving them what they like. Now for lunch, we're going to go ahead and make some buckwheat pancakes because I have a big old bucket of buckwheat to use up. Now this is hulled buckwheat. And I know some of you are going to ask, what are those black dots in there? Are those bugs? Those are not bugs. The hull of buckwheat is a really dark kind of black color. And some of the pieces of those hulls end up kind of stuck in that. I'm trying to get it to focus to show you. But nope, those are not bugs. That is the whole of the buckwheat seed. And it is no problem to have that in there. It will just grind down and be in our flour. You can actually grind down whole buckwheat that is unhulled and it just has extra nutrition in it. So we took our buckwheat flour here and I'm just doing this, adding some baking powder, and baking soda. I'm not really going by a recipe. I'm just adding what I want, some salt here, and mixing all those dry ingredients together. I saw one little buckwheat hole in there I'm picking out. We're adding some eggs to it, a little bit of almond milk, some olive oil, vanilla extract, and I'm gonna mix that together. I decided I needed more liquid, so this is the juice that is left over from those canned pears and peaches we had a few days ago. I'm just adding that as a sweetener and extra liquid to the pancake batter just to get it out of the fridge and use it up. It adds some really good flavor to the batter as well. My sweet girl Gracie decided that she wanted some coconut whipped cream. And so she's putting powdered sugar in the bottom of the bullet blender and then she's getting a can of coconut cream. We're just going to put those together 
and whip them up in the blenders to kind of break up some of the fat in that coconut cream and get it thoroughly mixed with the sugar. And then I have a whipped cream dispenser. I'll link this in the description also. And this is how we make our dairy-free whipped cream. If you buy it in the store, they sell coconut whipped cream. It is so expensive, so it saves us money to do this ourselves. There's the little cartridge that helps whip it up, and that works great. So just cleaning off our griddle here from breakfast and getting it all greased and ready for our pancakes. Like I said, I'm keeping the heat outside. We do not have central air, and it has been 90 degrees this week. So any meal that I can cook outdoors keeps our house that much cooler and keeps us more comfortable. Just like with the bacon and eggs, it's really convenient to be able to use this big griddle. We can get a large amount of pancakes done in a very short amount of time when we use the griddle outside. So this is what it looked like. Gracie flipped my pancakes for me and they turned out wonderful. They're going to go ahead and top them with some maple syrup and of course that uh, coconut whipped cream that Gracie made for me. I love pancakes as a lunch. It's just a quick option uh, for the children and they absolutely love it. It's um, actually pretty nutrient dense as well, especially if you grind the flour freshly, you know, add the eggs and some good fat to the top of it. It fills bellies and children seem to really enjoy it. All right, let's move to the next meal. As I mentioned, I'm trying to be really intentional about using fresh herbs. We have some dill here growing in the garden. It smells so amazing. Um, we also have garlic chives here, and I'm going to grab some green onion tops as well. And this is just when there's not a whole lot of other options growing fresh in the garden, this is a great way to add some fresh green nutrition to meals and some great flavor harvest those fresh herbs. And one of my goals with this challenge, as I mentioned, is just to be really intentional about using this stuff up while it's fresh and at its peak flavor. We're gonna make some potatoes with those herbs. I have some red potatoes here, the rest of this little jar of bacon grease. Gonna get those herbs washed. We're just gonna chop all this up and get it in our roasting pan here. And we're gonna roast this in the oven while I work on our protein for this meal, which is going to be um, homegrown chicken legs. These are from the chicken, the meat birds that we raised last year. And I like, as with any meat that we grill, we did all of it usually gets sprinkled with Montreal steak seasoning. We get this in bulk from Azure Standard and just refill this container with it. We are grilling our chicken legs, or I am grilling the chicken legs on this day. We're also, as a side dish, going to have some frozen, um, sweet corn from 2022's growing season. This was blanched and vacuum sealed and put in the freezer. Then all you have to do in order to cook it is boil it and it turns out perfectly like fresh corn on the cob. So this is what the other options. I also grabbed some steak and threw that on the grill um, after the chicken legs were done. That's that corn on the cob. As I mentioned, all you have to do is blanch it before you freeze it and it's a great way to preserve that sweet corn so that you can enjoy it throughout the year. All right, and that is that meal. That's about it for this week on the Three Rivers Challenge. It was a short week since um, June <laughs> began in the middle of the week. Next week, we'll be back with a full week of meals for you. As with always, whenever we're doing the Three Rivers Challenge, make sure that you click on the hashtag Three Rivers Challenge in the title of this video, and you can see everybody else that is participating in the challenge here on YouTube. There's so many great channels that are going to be sharing their ideas for how to use fresh items from their garden, as well as the stuff that they've preserved in their pantry. And so I just love this community. Make sure you follow along with everybody who's participating. All right, that's it for this week, friends. We'll see you back next week with another full week of meals. Until then, I hope you have a blessed week. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.